Hello and welcome everyone. This is CG of CG Computers and Electronics, your source for computer service support and repair. Today's presentation is the difference between open source and closed source software. I'd like to start off with this presentation by looking at closed source software. Um, most of the software that we use, like Windows, Mac OS, that are used in many houses and many businesses and many industries, are proprietary. An example of proprietary software again is Mac hardware. They have hardware designed specifically to run the Mac OS 10 system. It's based off of an Intel processor and chipset. So you can run also Windows on it using Boot Camp but again Mac is proprietary to Mac OS. Same thing with Windows, it's proprietary to PCs. Like I said, it, it can run on Mac hardware via boot camp. And just like Mac OS has its own version of Office that's specific to its kernel, same thing with Windows. Same thing with Adobe, there's Adobe version Photoshop for Windows and there's Adobe version Photoshop for Mac. There's a debate whether Mac is better than Windows, I mean, it all comes down to price of the hardware, price of the operating system, price of the software, and what you're willing to spend. Which is the second bullet point that I have is the price, which is set at a premium to use closed shell or closed source software. Um, you got to pay some money in order to use the product. I mean, the product is not free, it's not cheap, and in some cases it's a lot of people can't afford to use it. That's why some of us elect to use open source, which I'll get to the next slide. And the source code for these programs are locked and they can't be altered. And it's altered for a reason, again, because these companies want to keep their share of the market and they like to keep their product proprietary and owned exclusively by them. That's why you cannot open alter the source code for Windows unless you know how to hack the system and change the source code to your liking which is usually not good so and I'll get to that in the next bullet point which is malware which Windows is notorious for having malware problems not so much Mac but Mac did had something years ago called a flashback I don't know if anybody remembered but yeah there was a malware outbreak with Mac OS Apple has since patched it and fixed it and it's good to go but I've also explained on other videos maybe not on this channel on other channels or just talking with people it's important to keep your system up to date with the latest and greatest uh, security patches apply them as needed but apply them don't ignore them because the next time you may not be so lucky and most antiviruses will only protect but so much so it's a good idea to have your system securely patched and that too is also at a premium and at a cost I mean, you can get some free antivirus programs such as AVG which works really good but again if you have somebody that's good with computers that you can get to, to check on your computer you can go ahead and put the free AVG but if you can't have a technician come to your house or place of business all the time then I would say invest in some money and get good antivirus protection program and like I said majority of the homes and businesses use closed source software again Windows and Mac OS with this popularity of the iPod which really cal catapult the Mac Macintosh computer into the market share it kinda laid low for a very long time only specifically geared to the creative community meaning the uh, graphic arts and music folks who use Mac OS to use certain programs to edit, compose music and edit photos and videos. And licensing is the last thing I want to touch on because in order for you to use these products you gotta register with the manufacturer. It's important. If you don't you're not going to be able to use the full functionality of the, your product that you've invested. So it's important folks to register your products register the software that comes with it so you can use full functionality of the software in conjunction with the hardware 
Okay, the next slide is open source software. The pros. You can take Linux operating system, in particular Ubuntu, and put it just about on any hardware that you have laying around. So if you have an old Pentium 4 computer, you can put Linux on it just to kind of keep it as a spare computer. But the cons, it, it lacks certain drivers for certain devices. Like I had a Kodak printer that couldn't print in Ubuntu Linux, so I had to get rid of that printer and get a new one. And you had to get a, a printer that's compatible with the software the drivers for it. So um, I had to go back and use Epson. Epson has good drivers for Linux, so that's what I end up spending. Uh, the cost is usually free, but there are some exceptions. Yes, um, by default, open source software is free and it is available to the general public. Uh, there are some exceptions. I know Red Hat. Linux you do have to pay for it I know you have to pay for support and they have their own team of professions that can help you use the product and also configure it and best keep it up to date so you gotta pay for your product there are some paid applications in the software distribution center in Linux that you can buy but most of the stuff is free uh, just to do this screencast that you see presented to you came at very little money invested out of my pocket so the only thing I had to do was get a copy of, of Ubuntu Linux put on the computer find a couple software to do the screencast and boom there you go um, the source code is free and it's open to the general public I skipped one bullet point the license is unlimited so you're not limited to how many times you can install or how many machines you can install Linux on it's usually open there's no limitations they don't put a cap like Windows and Mac OS does where they charge you each time you use it or they tax you um, and the source code is available to the general public very little or no malware to be found on open source because again the people that develop open source programs and operating systems constantly update their product that's why every six months or a year they always come out with something new or if they like with Linux they have a long-term um, OS they'll just give you security updates and patches for certain programs and keep your system up to date with the latest updates so you don't have to really worry and not too many homes and businesses use open source software that is true uh, there are some exceptions to the rule. I'm using open source right now just to do this screencast. I remember working for a client in New Jersey at a local university here and their department, at least the department that I was working for with the um, through a staffing agency, were using Fedora Linux which I was very surprised and I was surprised when they interviewed me, do you know anything about Linux? I said yeah, I, well I use mainly Ubuntu and I'm comfortable using it so that's probably how I got the job but not too many people use Linux because a lot of people feel it's complicated they can't use it it's not Windows is how do I navigate it it's you know you gotta take time you gotta play around with it kinda get comfortable using it it's like learning any anything new you gotta get used to it same thing with Windows 8 I get used to it a lot of people don't like it but right now this is what Windows has to offer so you gotta get used to it and I would say majority of the internet is powered via open source software meaning Apache servers Apache um, yeah Apache servers some are using um, CentOS Linux to host the Apache on some are using Ubuntu server some are using desktop and they just have Apache installed and they're sharing it via their um, cable DSL or files internet at home or their small business so majority, like I said majority of the internet is powered via open source meaning your website that is hosted on probably is powered by Linux in conclusion actually no not in conclusion I'm skipping ahead which one should I choose? Again, this decision, folks, is totally up to you. 
as to what you want to do with your computer that's something you have to think about and that's something you have to consider as an investment C computers are in some ways investment they are used to help you to accomplish certain goals and certain tasks it is up to you as a end user to figure out which task fits you mine chooses to be open source at, at the moment right now because I don't have much in terms of funds and, and, a, and I have a very tight budget so I gotta work with what I have until I can get better now I conclude this video I've covered some key areas between open source software and closed source software like I said the decision is totally up to you as an end user what your goals are and what your needs are and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for attentively following this video please visit the website at cgcomputersandelectronics.com you can also follow us on Facebook at CG Computers and Electronics. Once again, thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching this video and I'll catch you guys later.